the NBC Sports Network welcomes you to the following presentation of U.S. Soccer. Abby Wambach has been firing in goals for the USA since 2002. Her tally has reached 156. She's two goals away from equaling the world record held by the great Mia Hamm. Tonight could be the night. The Red Bull Arena in Harrison, New Jersey is filling with eager soccer fans as the U.S. women's national team take on South Korea tonight in an international friendly. It could be an historic night for women's soccer if Abby Wambach scores a hat-trick tonight. Mia Hamm's world record of 158 goals will fall. Stranger things have happened. It should be a lot of fun tonight. Hello, everybody. I'm Arlo White. Kate Margraf, an Olympic gold medalist and a World Cup winner as well as alongside me. And, of course, on the left flank, an unfamiliar position, Abby Wambach. Hi, Abby. Great that you've joined us this close to kickoff. I know you don't like talking about this record. I know you're a team player. You always thank your teammates for all of your 156 goals that you've scored. But what chance a bit of history for the viewers tonight and maybe grabbing a hat trick and getting that record? Well, you know, we have a great crowd on hand. I don't know exactly how many tickets sold, but I think it's going to be close to capacity. So more than anything, I just want to give them a good show. You know, we want to entertain the fans. We want to give them something to be proud of and something to cheer for. So I spoke to Mia Hamm last night, and she is so excited for you to break this record. Tell us a little bit about what her influence on you was. I mean, going back from the first day I got here, you know, into the professional uh, scene, she's been coaching me, mentoring me, giving me all the information that I needed to, to score as many goals as I've been able to do. So, I, I mean, I couldn't have had a better situation, better leader. Uh, you know, Mia's going down in my book as uh, legendary as everybody already knows. Now, are you passing that down to Alex Morgan? I hope so. I mean, <laughs> not that I feel like I'm a legend, but... You know, I think Alex is on pace to score way more than both Mia and myself. Uh, you know, my career isn't going to last as long as I'm sure Alex's will. So uh, I'm really proud of her and her growth over the last couple of years. Abby, we followed that wonderful route to the uh, Olympic gold medal last year. You came up with that great quote to us. I'm going to leave all my human beingness on the field at Wembley to ensure you've got gold. And you did so. You've achieved so much. When this record falls, what is left for you? You've been injured. You've had an Achilles problem. What keeps you going? I mean, the elusive World Cup title that I've never won. Uh, it's a pretty simple answer, in my opinion. And, you know, we got a couple of years to wait for that, but uh, I'm, uh, my sights are already set on that. You know, if I break the record from now until then, great. But at the end of the day, that championship will mean way more than any world record. Uh, no offense to Mia, because she's obviously garnered all the, the respect and, and, and my respect, especially. So I'm excited to be here. More importantly, I'll be excited to be in, in Canada in 2015. Boy, if you keep going to the next World Cup, we're talking 200 goals here. This is absolutely incredible. Hey, look, I'm just working on 157. <laughs> so. um, in terms of how you feel, how are you going to get yourself there? Because saying you want to do it, obviously you're a determined character, you're a competitor, you do have this Achilles problem. You either play with a smile, it seems to me, or a grimace in pain. How are you going to get yourself to Canada? I, you know, it's just a matter of making sure my body's uh, performing and I'm performing. You know, I'm not on the roster by any means. Tom still has to select the roster going into 2015. And I've got from now until then to prove that I'm good enough and uh, healthy enough to do it. Now, this is the healthiest I have seen you in a couple of years. What are you doing differently to keep yourself in this shape? Well, aside from booting my foot every single night, which is not very comfortable to sleep in, uh, but we have a fantastic training staff here. They keep me, you know, at, at peak, as much peak performance as I possibly can get. And then, of course, you know, your off-season training regimen is, is crucial so that you can last throughout any, any kind of season. Abby, we better let you go. You've got to get changed. You've got 90 minutes to play. All the best. If the record falls tonight, great. If it's not tonight, at some point in the future, congratulations from us in advance. What a terrific servant Thanks. to U.S. Women's Soccer. Thanks for Abby Wambach joining us just a few moments before kickoff. You'll have the lineups with Kate Margraf and uh, Russ Thaler will join us in a few moments' time. What a reception for Abby Wombat. Stay with us. Very excited group of soccer fans tonight at Red Bull Arena to see the U.S. national team 
take on South Korea. And Saturday night, the 2013 Stanley Cup Final presented by Geico continues live in prime time with Game 5 between the Bruins and Blackhawks series tied to two games apiece. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on the NBC Sports Network leading up to the action on NBC. Welcome back, everybody. Russ Thaler now with Kate Markrapp. And Kate, this is the last time we're going to get to see the national team until September. And we're expecting in the vicinity of 20,000 at Red Bull Arena tonight. Let's take a look at the lineup, starting with USA and Tom Sermani starting the lineup. Well, Tom Sermani is going with the 4-4-2. And this back four, along with Hope Soto, has never played together. So watch, but more importantly, listen to Hope Soto and Christy Rampo and the two veterans leading this young unit. And in the midfield, they're in a diamond shape. They're a little bit more tucked in. Coach Sermani wanted them not to be so isolated. Carly Lloyd, number 10, will dictate the tempo, and the creativity comes from number 12, Lauren Cheney. And she's going to be trying to hit Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach, whether it's on the ground, whether it's in the air. She will try to create some combination play. And now let's take a look at South Korea's starting a lot. They're going to line up in a 4-5-1, and what's interesting is they're doing the same exact roster that suited up against the United States in their 4-1 defeat. And the reason why they do this is to build confidence. And this is a team you can't pick out one player because the sum is greater than its part, but if you could, you're going to pick out number 10, G So Young. They call her the G Messi. She's so good with the ball, can clinical finisher, and a great passer. She is a difference maker for this team. I like that. The team mess. Yeah, that was her name during the Youth World Cup. She scored eight goals in six matches. Very nice. Hey, there's so much familiarity with the U.S. team. We know so many of the names, but Tom Sermani, he's only been the head coach of this team in 2013. Where is he in his development as the manager of the most successful national team in the world? You know, I don't think Tom Sermani is currently developing anything. I think he's assessing. He, and what he is doing is he's giving young players chance. Done tonight. Klingenberg at outside bats. It's exciting. I haven't seen a coach in this long, the, this many opportunities to young players. We are seeing a little bit of a youth movement tonight with those fullbacks. What do you know about them on USA? Well, for Crystal Dunn, she's a winner. She's won at the Youth World Cup level. 2012 last year. She's also won an NCAA championship. This girl can play end to end line, endurance, speed. She has it all. Just lacks experience and needs a little bit more technique. She's going to build, and Tom Sermani is giving her that chance. And when you come into a side like this, if you can't go, you're exposed pretty quickly. So anyone who's out there on the field, we know, has something special in them. And the players are just about ready to take the field. So let's take you all the way up top and join Arlo White. Russ, thank you very much indeed. And there she is, straight from our set into the locker room, a quick change, and she's ready. Could tonight be the night? It's a tall order to score a hat-trick in any form of soccer, of course. And we're not disrespecting South Korea, who I thought played pretty well at times in keeping the ball in that 4-1 defeat that perhaps flattered the US a little bit in Foxborough on Saturday. But she is a prolific goal scorer. 156 came on Saturday, that injury time penalty the 100th U.S. Women's National Team win when Abby Wambach scores a goal. A terrific player. It could be a dramatic night. International friendly action to come after the break. Kickoff is moments away at the Red Bull Arena. Let's head down to Kate Margraff between the benches for us tonight for the players to watch. Kate, who have you picked out tonight for us? Well, for the United States, you have to talk about Alex Morgan. Her off-the-ball movement is world-class. Tom Sermani wants her running at the back line consistently for 90 minutes, more runs than she traditionally does. And for South Korea, number eight, Choi Sahawan. She scored the lone goal against the United States a couple days ago. She will be coming from deep line positions, making it really difficult for the United States to pick her up. But she's got some confidence, and she's excited to score, and she wants to do it again today. Okay, thank you. Kate Margraff with all the observations and analysis from between the benches tonight. Let's get to the head coaches. Tom Samani from Glasgow in Scotland, appointed to succeed Pia Sundhager in October after eight years in charge of Australia. He is the third consecutive U.S. coach to stay unbeaten in their opening ten games. Yoon Diok Yo, 52 years old, a former South Korean national team defender himself who played at the 1990 World Cup in Italy. And tonight's referee, Margaret Domko from Wisconsin. She represented the US at last year's U-20 World Cup in Japan, which of course, the Americans won. 
So Abby Wambach is on 156 international goals, just two short of Mia Hamm's international scoring record. And with a youthful defence alongside the vastly experienced Christy Rampone, this could be a glimpse into the future for Tom Tamani's US national team. The World Cup is two years away. Megan Rapino returns to the side, is offside. But a bright start, to say the least, Kate, to this match tonight from the US side. Well, that's something the United States must be encouraged by, is seeing a happy Megan Rapino. She is a player that plays better when she's happy off the field. Just coming back from France, a direct ball into Alex Morgan turning. Unfortunately, Rapino mistimes her run, gets behind the defense a little bit too early. But look at the numbers they're putting forward early on in the game. Rapino, as you've mentioned there, just back from Europe, she got to the Champions League final with Lyon. And they were shot by Wolfsburg at Stamford Bridge in London. Here's Rapino again, the home of Chelsea Football Club from the English Premier League. It was formally announced yesterday by the NWSL side, the Seattle Reign, that Rapino will be joining them. Most likely to make her debut at the weekend. They need her. The Reign have started the season poorly, 0-9 and 1. But what a terrific experience for Megan Rapino. We spoke to her yesterday. And I asked her to, to describe the difference from playing soccer in the United States to perhaps in Europe, she says awareness. The players, perhaps not the biggest or the strongest in Europe, but they are technically very good. And it's a theme, Kate, that we've heard from the players and Tom Samani over the last couple of days. This idea that the United States, at national team level, the game has to get a little bit more sophisticated because it's getting better around the world, isn't it? Well, it was more glaring to me was her statement when she said, listen, I'm the most technical player along with Tobin on the United States women's national team. But I'm average at Lyon. So that's a sign that the whole team, she believes, needs to get a little bit better to pick when to you know, go and when to hold the ball. And she's excited to come back and try to get better. Now she's inspired just to improve her game even more. Found by Alex Morgan there. Two minutes gone, scoreless thus far. The World Cup in Canada is over two years away. We as yet don't know where the United States qualification tournament will be held in CONCACAF. The team will continue to build under Tom Samani. Here's Lauren Chaney, Heather O'Reilly. Morgan is onside. Peeling down the centre is Abby Wambach. Outside of Morgan is O'Reilly from New Jersey, of course. And the ball just out of play. Couldn't quite wrap a foot around it. Heather O'Reilly. Experienced campaigner, 188 cap tonight, and of course she put the cross in at Old Trafford for that incredible 123rd minute winning goal in the 4-3 win over Canada by Alex Morgan to reach the gold medal match. Yeah, the Jersey goals tonight, three of them starting. Lloyd, Rampone and O'Reilly on home turf. South Koreans can barely get out of their own half in the early stages here. Alex Morgan. Here's Cheon Unaha. Now to the central midfielder, Kim Nare. That ball will just about get there. Almost intercepted by Abby Wombach. Kim Hay Ree is the fullback number 20. He liked to push forward at Foxborough. On Saturday, it was a 4-1 defeat for the South Koreans. It was interesting into the second half. They only trailed by two goals to one. The US got off to a great start. They scored in the third minute. Christy Mewis with her first international goal. Lauren Chaney with her first for over a year. And then the South Koreans got into the game, I felt, Kate, and they actually held the ball quite nicely for periods of play. Well, I talked to someone with the South Korean Federation. They said, listen, we were just a bit nervous that first 10 minutes, and we got punished, but they felt they were able to bring their game to it, some possession and so ability to hold on to the game. Now they just want to limit the first 10 minutes and not give the United States chances like that. Yeah. Shin So Young, the captain of South Korea. She did well against Alex Morgan. Morgan didn't score with any of those four goals at the weekend. She's got a work cut out again tonight. Here's Morgan. Towards the back post is a volleyed opportunity here for Carly Lloyd, who scored from range on Saturday. Not this time for the US number 10 who scored famously two goals in the gold medal match and there's already an inquest at the back there for the South Koreans but two terrific goals at Wembley Stadium in that 2-1 victory over Japan and another gold medal she just scores in Olympic gold medal matches Kate doesn't she? Oh she scores when it matters most <laughs> if you're not going to score at all that's the time to do it 
Now she's just a big time player when it comes on and she can strike from distance. She's playing. That's risky. Alex Morgan has picked the pocket of the South Korean defense. And that's borderline. And there's a challenge by Cho So Hyun in the penalty area. And on Alex Morgan, the breakdown of communication, the attempted short goal kick just didn't work. They're going to be so mindful of the pace and power of Alex Morgan up top. And once again, South Korea showing some early nerves here, just settling into the game. Here's Lee Se Chin. She was given the run around by Sydney LaRue at the weekend. Cross to the back post. It's a very good one, and here it comes almost to Abby Wambach, who was lurking on the edge of the six-yard area. Turned back beautifully by Alex Morgan. It was a deep, probing cross from Heather O'Reilly. Well, in order to beat teams that like to condense so much, they're able to dispossess South Korea, but look at the entire South Korea team is pinched over. Alex Morgan trying to get it back, but Kim Jung-ri, quick off her line, reading the ball and snuffing out the opportunity. Well, we talked to Tom Samani yesterday, a very amiable man from Glasgow in Scotland, eight years as coach of Australia, nicknamed the Matildas, as in waltzing Matildas. He advanced the national team in that country. Now he's got a job on here for the United States. And we talked about Abby Wombat chasing this record. Chasing Mia is the hashtag being used by US soccer. He said he won't alter the game plan. He expects her to play for 90 minutes tonight. Here's Lauren Chaney. Alex Paul has had a very bright start. Rapino, fairly cross towards one back. Oh, it bounces awkwardly. Kim Chung Mi playing her 64th international, the South Korean goalkeeper. Flicks on wide by Cho So Hyun, but here's Megan Rapino again. Look at the angle of that ball, curling into the path of Alex Morgan. Look out for Abby Wombach, number 20. The low ball comes in this time. And a chance on the edge of the area, here's the drive and it's wide. And that was real Carly Lloyd territory that time, closer than she was on Saturday. Then she found the net with a low drive to the goalkeeper's right, not this time. Well, it's a great textured ball bending into Alex Morgan's run, and she lays off. The intended recipient is Abby Wambach, but this is why I like Carly Lloyd's defensive center mid. She can hold back, read the play, and jump onto it, because she has such a strong, powerful strike from distance. Four goals in those Olympic Games last year for Carly Lloyd. And remember, she went into the tournament effectively as a backup. Always likely to get some game time but she came in for the injured Shannon Box and one of the stars of the show in the end 44 international goals for her now combination of Rapino and Lloyd rise to that one but here comes South Korea but not for long South Korea FIFA world ranking of 16 they've made one appearance in the World Cup that was in 2003 when the tournament was shifted to the USA. They lost all three games. They've yet to appear in an Olympic Games, but have had success at youth level. World Cup winners at U17 level in 2010. Here's Morgan. The future looking bright for the South Korea. The immediate future not looking so great with Morgan into the penalty area. And it's a corner kick, number two for the United States. Remember Megan Rapino curling one in for an Olympico but of all places Old Trafford in that epic semi-final against Canada. Abby Wambach is lurking at the back edge of the penalty area. Here comes the delivery, low to the near post. Cheney. Back to Rapino. Low cross again. Could it go all the way through? The Americans are claiming it's come off a South Korean defender, and that is the case. Corner number three there. In the early stages here to the USA. The United States has lots of options. Look for Wambach. Look for number 15, 14, Whitney Ingen. They're both very dominant in the air, along with Carly Lloyd, number 10. Wambach has scored 67 of her 156 goals with her head. She's got her arm raised here. She is the target. She rises. Just a little too high into her left-hand side that time. Ramp home there. Just ahead of Park Hee Young. Here's Alex Morgan again. 
Marco Sohyun is the defender. Cheney with the cross. Here's one back in the area. Back to goal. Have you one back? 157 for Abby Wambach. And this could be a big night for her and for US soccer. 1-0 to the United States. She's got her early goal. She does, and that is just one step closer. What I love is the difference in this goal. You got Alex Morgan, back to pressure. She's working on how to play with her back to pressure. It gets serving to Abby, and this is why she's so good. She can hold people off so strong, gets on the half turn with her touch, looks up, finds a keeper, and places it right past keeper. Look at this. Look at the strength on the ball. Two players, one behind, one coming back on her, has the patience and the poise to turn under pressure, pick her head up, and slot it right by the keeper's feet. It's a difficult reaction save for Kim Jong-mi for South Korea. Her first goal was April the 22nd, 2002. A 3-0 victory against Finland in San Jose. She's now on 157 goals, one short of the record. South Korea venture into the US penalty area for the first time tonight. An incredible record for Abby Wambach. She averages a goal every 101 minutes on the field compared to Mia Hamm's 130 minutes. This is her 207th international. And this could be a very, very exciting night. As one back chases Mia Hamm's record. From South Korea, who've conceded early again. Flip forward, one back. The flag stays down. Abby Wombach, is this the record tire? No, it's not. It was an excellent save by Kim Jong-mi in the end. Everybody looking down at the assistant referee to wait for a flag, perhaps. None came. One back stroke through, but the goalkeeper was strong. South Korea is getting very lucky. A miscue by number five, Lee Se-jin, holds one back on line. And with a breakaway, unfortunately, just too close to the keeper. A kick save, a good reaction save by Kim Jong-mi. Jung -mi. Crystal done with the throw-in. Only her sixth appearance. Just showing the depth of talent available on the production line in UN's women's soccer. Here's Cheney. Inside it goes. Alex Morgan into the penalty area. Morgan is there. And it clatters into the midriff of Shin So Young. Wombat was at the far post again. I don't know, Kate, but she's shooting her or trying to tee up Wombat. <laughs> I think everyone's trying to tee up Wombat. Number five, Lee Se Jin for South Korea leaves her on. Wambach takes a touch to cut off her defender and unfortunately doesn't get it wide enough of Kim Jong Lee. So the fourth corner for the United States. Here's Alex Morgan to take it. Across it goes, flicks header. Wambach in the penalty area again. She can't get a chance this time to get a shot away. And there's a chance of a breakaway here for South Korea. She's so young. Excellent defending by Crystal Dunn. And she keeps the ball in play as well. Only 20 years old, Crystal Dunn, from the University of North Carolina. She was an unused substitute on Saturday. We asked her somewhat cheaply yesterday, Kate, didn't we? Do you have any posters of the national team on your wall? She smiled and said no comment. She absolutely does, without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> there is no doubt in her mind, but I wouldn't want to say it either. I said that once in an interview and I got heckled for it by my older teammates for my whole life. Ah, there you go, you set a precedent. <laughs> Embarrassment. One back from distance, will she have a go? She does, it takes a deflection of Alex Morgan, it makes it a little bit awkward there for Kim Jong-mi. Well, I'd say she's got a particular eye for goal tonight, but having <laughs> scored 157 <laughs> international goals, it's just a normal night at the office for Abby Wombach, really, isn't it? <laughs> that was a bit ambitious. Long-distance shots are not her bread and butter. In fact, 40% of her goals come from balls in the air. So I would leave those more to a Carly Lloyd, but right now, let her have them. They're not crushing her. It's the option. You might as well take it. United States currently on a 33-match unbeaten run. And, uh, Abby Wombat's goals have contributed to that. And there are the latest standings. Mia Hamm took 273 games, by the way, to get to 158. Wombat on pace to beat the record in a fewer amount of games. She played in some very good teams. And as she told us on our set before the game, she's going to stick around. She wants a World Cup winner's medal. 
She wants what you've got, Kate. They all actually want just another star on the U.S. soccer jersey. It's on their sleeve. They have two right now. She, I think she would have retired after the Olympics had they won in 2011, which they lost in penalty kicks to Japan. And she did score in that game. And the thing about Abby is you always know she will put her body on the line. Look at Gunn into the area. That's a lovely ball across the face of goal. Just too far for Alex Morgan, but as usual, Morgan retrieves well. Here's Megan Rapino. Cheney making a good run into the penalty area. Determined play by Crystal Dunn down the right-hand side. She said yesterday, when I asked her what her key strengths were, she said, tenacity. Rapino into the area, one back on the edge of the six-yard box. Rapino onto the right foot, here comes the cross to the near post. And he re battling there with Megan Rapino. He re down off the field. It's a barrage at the moment for the South Koreans. Let's take a look at Crystal Dunn's work here, Kate. Well, just the speed of Crystal Dunn. She times her run perfectly, gets behind the defender, and then she goes on the other one, reads where that person is going, good anticipation. And this is a highly sophisticated ball. Playing it early, behind the defense, they're all facing towards their own goal, making it very difficult to cover. But number 20, Kim hae ri for South Korea, does a good job shepherding the ball out of bounds and taking Alex Morgan and preventing any opportunity she had towards goal. And Crystal Dunn, just one of the members of the United States U-20 team that we mentioned earlier, that won the World Cup against Germany in September in Japan. 1-0 in the final. They lost 3-0 to Germany earlier in the tournament. They fought back. Crystal was telling us, Crystal was telling us yesterday. So much depth in US women's soccer. It's frightening for the rest of the world. Current Olympic champions. And here's Abby Wambach again. Lauren Chaney. One back goes into the penalty area. Alex Morgan. They're having difficulty playing it out of their own third here. Defensive third, South Korea, just like that. Heather O'Reilly towards the penalty area. One back's there, of course, again. O'Reilly tries to measure a ball into the near post. Now it's Cheney. Cheney fires it across towards one back. He doesn't get there. Now Carly Lloyd. Here comes South Korea. Possibilities here. Numbers in attack for them. Here's the striker, Yu young inside of Dunn. Nicely played into the centre of the field to Cho So-hyun. And the fullback, Lee Se-chin. Nice to spread the ball wide, intelligently. Now to Park Hee-young. But it's offside. What's different from this game from the last one is I thought South Korea in the previous matchup was able to have two or three passes and then ping a long-distance ball to the feet of a player and get an advantage on the weak side of the United States. Right now, USA has fixed that by pressuring the person on the ball a little bit more, making that pass more inaccurate. And that's why South Korea has not been able to find the rhythm, get the ball, pass it around, like they, like they build their confidence, like they work the bread and butter, how they play soccer. Here's Megan Rapino, Lauren Cheney. Bursting up the left-hand side, Megan Klingenberg offering her support. Carly Lloyd. Here is Klingenberg. As for Tierso in Sweden, just arrived with the camp. Cheney. Here it is! 158 for Abby Wambach! She's level with Mia Hamm! What a moment! History at the Red Bull Arena! The joint world record holder in international soccer for goal scoring is Abby Wombach. Well, they've taken the ball and they've taken it off the field. They give it to the United States bench and they're going to hold on to it. That's very customary for any time a record, a cap, or a special goal has been scored. They're going to save that, sign it. You get to see a look at that goal. Lauren Cheney gets a turn, flips it in. Abby Wombach's signature diving header, redirects it, times it well, gets just enough on it, loses their player. Poor man marking by South Korea captain Jim Seo-yun. And there's a the parents, Pete and Judy Wombach. A lot of the families in town up in the box. 
all her friends and loved ones there to support her on her big, potentially big night, which is, is, is turning out to be. You wouldn't bet against it now, Kate, would you? 70 minutes remaining, one goal required. She's in the mood. Mia Hamm, the great Mia Hamm, has held the record since scoring her 98th goal, by the way, in 1998. It took a pass, Michelle Akers. Here's Alex Morgan, one back to the penalty area. Well, we say hat-tricks are hard to come by in international soccer. She scored five of them in her career amidst 38 multi-goal games. She's now got the record for that, by the way, off Mia Hamm. This is her 39th. But I think the roof will lift off the Red Bull Arena if Abby Wombat can notch a hat-trick and get 159 and break the record tonight. Megan Rapino with the corner kick. One back at the back post to make a darting run, trademark run. There she is, and it's a good header clear. Only as far as Lauren Cheney, Heather O'Reilly, she'll have a go. It's deflected. And straight into the mid-drift in the end of the relieved goalkeeper, Kim Jung mi An electrifying performance so far by the United States. Abby Wombach said she's tired of the talk about this record. She wants it over soon. I've got so much respect for me, as he's told us yesterday. The record doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I don't think it really does, but I don't quite 100% buy into that. I think the record does matter. But when I talked to Mia last night, she's like, I'm like, Mia, was there a lot of pressure on you when you were trying to break the scoring record? And she's like, Kate, that's your job as a, as a forward is, is to score goals. It's not like you're asking her to do something that she's not supposed to be doing. It's a bit of a distraction, but you want to do it for yourself, but you also want to do it for your team. You want to share this experience, experience with the people that helped you. This will be offside. It's a lovely free ball by Ji So Young towards Park Hee Young. It just was a split second too late and the flag goes up. Now, it, was, it was poorly timed run, but just to finish it off, she just said, you want to share this with your teammates because they're living this experience with you. So I think she absolutely wants to break the record, and maybe tonight will be the night. Dying the ball towards Heather O'Reilly. Lee Say Chin, it looks to me. Yes, he, she has. She's conceded the corner. Number six. And look, Kate, let's be honest, it's two years until the World Cup in Canada. If people are talking about US women's soccer, in the United States, because of this record chase, well, that's got to be good. All press is good press, and this is the good kind of press that you want. Cheney takes a short corner, Alex Morgan towards the back post. One back was unmarked, believe it or not. Cheney again, one back hovering on the edge of the 18-yard area. Fitting that the record equaling goal was a header. the 68 of the 158 goals and here's another opportunity for a from a set piece for the United States Megan Rapino is over it Ron Cheney will stand in an offside position just to confuse the South Korean defense Heather O'Reilly there as well one back in that crowd of players on the edge of the 18 yard area referee Margaret Domka from Wisconsin just wants the wall the one woman wall of Yu young -ah, back 10 yards. Here comes the cross. Before it gets to one back, it's headed half clear. Here comes a shot and it's just wide from Heather O'Reilly. Excellent effort with the left foot from East Brunswick, New Jersey, Heather O'Reilly. Wasn't far off with this one. No, the ball is played into a dangerous position Cleared by South Korea, Heather Riley takes a touch. It's bouncing backwards, but it's impressive that she was able to lean back and still get that much power on a shot and keep it low with her non-dominant foot. Kim chung Mi sends the ball towards the halfway line, a commanding header by Carly Lloyd. They've lost out this time, the United States. She's so young. In field to Cho Cho Hyun. It's offside once again, this time against Kim Nare, who played 71 minutes at the weekend. What's interesting to watch is the distance between the midfield and the back line of the United States. It's much tighter than I've seen in a long time, which is making these South Korea runs 
offsides. They're going to have to time it a lot better if they're going to have success with the short, short, long ball. Kim Nare, by the way, plays in the WK League, the Women's Korean League, for a team called Suwon. To give them their full title, the Suwon City Facilities Management Corporation Women's Football Club. So I want to know what the chant is on the terraces for that team. We so wanted to say that. Here's Rapino. Morgan's onside. One back's on the edge of the area. Alex Morgan with the shot. He takes a deflection. Morgan again. Rapino's lingering in the penalty area on the edge of the six yard box. And in the end, she's a judge to have fouled. She's so young, and the South Koreans can relieve a little bit of the pressure here momentarily. hearing that US soccer have changed their hashtag on Twitter from chasing Mia to hashtag court Mia. If that'll change again before the night is out. I'm sitting in between the two benches and the South Korean coach Yoon duk yeol has not sat down the entire time. He's trying to organize his team, telling his team to get a bit more compact, put more pressure, which appears to what he's saying with his hand motions, put more pressure, get tighter, and don't give the United States such free will to play whatever ball they want. And that was a heavy clash between Abby Wambach and Lim Son Chu in the centre of the field. The centre back, Lim, both up, both seemingly okay. 20th cap for her tonight. She scored one international goal, Lim Son Chu, from Hyundai Steel. Home with the free kick. Flick on, good flick on in the penalty area. Sales harmlessly wide in the end. Whitney Engen winning her ninth cap today. She plays her soccer, her club soccer in England in the Women's Super League for Liverpool ladies. They're on a break over there for the upcoming European Championships. Pia Sundhager, the recent former coach of this side, is in charge of her native Sweden on home territory for that tournament. Forcing her way into the side, Engen. Fifth appearance of 2013. She started the Algarve Cup final win over Germany earlier this year. She, she's a typical centre back. She's big, strong, great in the air, excellent one for one defender. What is impressing most in her growth, because I played with her rookie year for the WBS Chicago Red Stars, is her communication. She kind of let, let me communicate because I played next to her. But now I can hear her from the side of the field, and I think that only helps the players around her, but I, that helps her stay focused in the game. Lauren Chaney. Here's Christy Rampone again. Who turns 38 years old on Monday, still going strong. Here's Engen. Rampone again, cap number 283 tonight. Remarkable record for her. Lovely turn by Alex Morgan. Here's Carly Lloyd. Morgan continues her run. It was just a shade or two behind her. Morgan, though, could get on the end of this from Abby Wombach. Look at the run by Heather O'Reilly to the corner of the six-yard area. And it's another corner for the United States. They're seventh of the game. Alex Morgan has 44 goals herself in 67 internationals. Megan Rapino again. No driven cross towards Wombach! History is made! Goal number 159! It's the international scoring record. One more than the great Mia Hamm. The way she plays, the way she's so courageous, puts her body on the line, it does not matter. You knew it was a matter of time when you played with her. 
to, to beat this record, to go and challenge it and now to beat it. I think the significance slightly lost for a moment there on the South Koreans who were trying to take the ball. It's a piece of history in US soccer, that ball. Mum's shedding a tear. It's a hat trick. Abby Wombach peers up to the suite that contains her family. They're from upstate New York, the Rochester area. And she's done it in 29 minutes or so. A sixth international hat trick, 159 goals. It's worth mentioning that Christine Sinclair, the great Canadian striker, is on 145. Those two will continue, I'm sure, to go toe to toe for a while yet. And worth remembering as well what a wonderful servant to the United States women's game Mia Hamm was and continues to be. Records are there to be broken. Abby Wambach has 159 goals. It is truly remarkable. Congratulations to her. And it's 3 0. Did I mention that, Kate? <laughs> By the way, side note. <laughs> Well, it could be a huge scoreline tonight, but I guess in a way they've got what they wanted. They've got the three goals for Abby Wombach. The wait is over. Now let's see how they approach the rest of this game. It's the last game for a while until the four friendlies yet to be announced. And the crowd are being informed, if they didn't know already, exactly the significance of that last goal for Abby Wombach. Megan Rapino. She won't score five in a game, one back. Maybe that's on tonight. Here comes the cross towards Abby one back. And wasn't it fitting, Kate? The goal number 159 came with her head. A 69th headed goal. Carly Lloyd towards the penalty area. It's a rash challenge, just got a toe on the ball there. Kim Nare. Done in strongly again. Leaving Ju So Yun on the ground. Look at the skill from Dunn. Gets the cross over towards Wombat. She whips this time. Well, the first time left foot strike into the top corner. I think he's asking a lot. <laughs> well, one thing that's impressive for the United States, this is the most excited in energy I've seen them come out in the first half. They've been kind of a little bit lax. They're trying to figure out how to play in the system that Tom Sermani wants to play in the style they want to play. And this is the first time I've seen them be a bit more proactive, go forward, maybe because they want to get rid of this bit of a distraction as, as wonderful it is is to break this record it was on everyone's mind instead of being 100 percent able to focus on how they want to grow as a team this has been a talking point not only for Wambach but for everybody else given away by Carly Lloyd here comes South Korea three red shirts in the attack Ji So Young takes possession done as the defender and the overlap on the outside on the right hand side is Chon Eun Ha and she get a crossover two red shirts in the penalty area works it onto the right foot straight to Dunn Shows good poise until that moment. She gives the ball away. Cho So Hyun. Worked on immediately by Heather O'Reilly. Battling away is the always strong Alex Morgan. Fighting there with Shin So Hyun and Morgan came out the winner. Well been a remarkable night so far she said to us yesterday Abby Wombach she will text or call Mia Hamm at some stage when the dust settles but she seemed confident when we spoke to her at this stadium yesterday flag should be raised here against Alex Morgan it is and I asked her what's what chance tonight she was a little coy on the set before the game but she did say there is a chance with a bit of a smile let's relive this historic moment goal number 159 for Abby Wombach Look at her timing, perfect power, gets her body around, always goes to the person who gave her the ball, in this case, Megan Rapino. Typical, classic, and very fitting that her 159th goal was in that manner. And a seventh hat trick ties Michelle Akers for the third most in US history. The records will continue to tumble. Rampone, Rapino. That's Klingenberg available on the left-hand side. Here she is, working against Lee Se Chin. Berg again in towards Alex Morgan. Good challenge in the end by Cho So Hyun. In fact, that was Lim Song Chu, excuse me.
Injury-wise, she had been struggling with tendonitis in her Achilles, Kate, hadn't she? But she says she sleeps in a boot every night. Things are getting better on the injury front. She turned 33 on June the 2nd. She'll be 35 at the World Cup in 2015. Yeah, she's figured out how to manage it. You know, this was something that was debilitating her performance. It hurt so bad, you could see the grimaces in her face. She was getting injections just to reduce the inflammation. And that overall grind on your psyche day in and day out, knowing that you're going to play hurt, takes its toll on your performance. Yu Yungar with a nice ball to Park Hee Young. Yu Yungar on the edge of the penalty area. Can she get a shot away against Hope Solo? She's lost it out to the penalty area by Rampone, and the drive comes in in the end. It's a fairly lame effort, unfortunately, for the South Koreans from Park Hee Young. But that's what South Korea is going to look to do. Right now, the United States has all the possession. Where they're going to get an opportunity is on the break. Dispossess two or three passes and go quickly. What I don't think they're doing well is they're not playing with power and strength. They're stronger than this. They seem a bit intimidated. And this is an inexperienced side that's taking a bit of a licking at the moment. Lovely vision by Cheney. Rubino perhaps a tap forward to get away with a handball. Klingenberg on the overlap. Against Cho So Hyun. Space and time here for Megan Rapino on the right foot. Carly Lloyd makes herself available. Rapino fancies a shot here. It's charged down in the end by the centre back Lim Son Shu. Rapino again. Cheney. Rapino. That's a good interception by Ji So Young. Making the run on the halfway line. She just strayed again. The ball came, to be fair, to Young Young Ga. It came a little bit late. She was actually in her own half, which wouldn't have been offside if the ball came a little bit quicker, but not so from Ji So Young this time. Yeah, Ji So Young is usually so good at playing those clinical finishes and the passes and dribbling at players. I, for South Korea to get a chance to get back in this game, she needs to see the ball more, but she also needs to put the game on her shoulders a little bit and take people on. That's what she's known for. Chaining outside of the boot to Heather O'Reilly. Here's the penalty area, O'Reilly. Wants the ball over, edge of the area. Here's Lauren Chaney. And she slices the effort, unfortunately for her. She scored the second goal on Saturday, Lauren Chaney, after seven minutes. It was his first international goal since January of 2012. That in a 13-0 win against Guatemala in the qualifiers. On good form for FC Kansas City in the NWSL this year. Four goals, four assists in eight appearances. She's a quiet performer. You don't realize how vital she is to the rhythm and the tempo of teams. And what makes her special, she can turn in the pocket. She can turn with pressure on her and totally nullify an entire midfield straight line. That's why Cheney is so special. And in order for the United States to utilize her talents, she needs to stay close to the forwards because that's when she's the most effective. Do you think going forward that Carly Lloyd's going to be happy with this position as the as the Effectively, the holding defensive midfielder, someone who really likes to get forward a lot, Carly Lloyd, doesn't she? I imagine some reluctancy, but I think if you want to play and the coach is like, this might be where I want to see you, you're going to take that opportunity make the best of it. I think it's Suser. She's so good in the air. She times it well. She's powerful, excellent on the tackle. And she's great at taking that one long touch and unleashing a powerful shot. There is no better space than that than coming from the defensive mid on a late-timed run. Shannon Box, you could argue, Kate, is the first choice in that position. She will be 38 by the time of the next World Cup in Canada in 2015. There is no obvious heir apparent coming through, which may mean that Carly Lloyd would have to get used to it, I guess. That's if, of course, Shannon Box doesn't retake that spot. She's had minor knee surgery recently. Right, right. I think that's what... First, it was the outside backs. The United States need more attacking outside backs. They're getting that. And now yeah. it's defensive mids. They need defensive mids. Shannon Box is the number one. But you know what? Right now, with the depth the United States have, it's going to be pretty tough to tell the A team from the B team over the next year. It's Lauren Cheney. Incidentally, if you are on Twitter, you can follow... Mia Ham at Mia Ham, and she's tweeted, Congratulations, Abby Wombag. So proud of you, my friend. You are a warrior and a true champion. Enjoy it. Pure class for Mia Ham. Ji 
been so young. And again. Very congested by the sideline. Throw into the South Koreans. Inside the final five minutes of a memorable first half here at the Red Bull Arena. One that will go down in history, in US women's soccer. Three goals for Abby Wambach if you're just joining us. All inside the first half an hour. Here she is again on 159 international goals, new world record. What's so interesting, you, you told the tale yesterday, Kate, and I think in the pregame show as well, where Mia Hamm took her to one side and mentored Abby Wambach in the early days of the Washington Freedom. Mia saw that she had something special. She had the weapons to be a very, very good player. And she said, one day you will take my scoring record. And it's just remarkable, isn't it, this lineage in US women's soccer that Abby Wambach's had that conversation with Alex Morgan already, hasn't she? Well, she learned from the best. I mean, there were no greater mentors than Mia Hamm and the Julie Foudies. And... You could tell Abby had something special. She just wasn't performing it consistently. I mean, uh, Mia Hamm, she had the experience to know what it took to have consistent, high-level performances. And credit Abby for listening and watching. It's not that easy for someone to say, hey, try doing this. You need to do this. But it was Mia Hamm, so she did. And that right there, you could see the evolution of her game from 2002 to 2003. She became one of the most dominant forwards at that point and has remained so her entire career. She was an absolute force of nature at the Olympics last year. She scored five goals in the opening five games all the way through to the final. Carly Lloyd got the plaudits, and rightly so, at Wembley against Japan in the 2-1 win for those two terrific goals. She took the first, Kate, do you remember, off the left foot of Abby Wan back at the back post, didn't she? With that stooping header that confused a lot of people in Wembley that night. The second was a terrific drive from distance. Yeah, it was hard to tell who scored that one, but in the end they have a gold medal around their neck, so I don't think either one of them really cares who scored it. <laughs> One ball towards Yu Yunga. The flag goes up again against South Korea. Now for South Korea to gain this experience that they so sorely need, they need to have a stiffer learning curve. Right now, that's a third or fourth offside for Yu Young Gun. She needs to hold her run a little bit more and then time it. You only need four or five yards of distance, and you can do that by just anticipating and delaying her run just a little bit more. Morgan, look at the space here for Rapino. She says, go and get it. And Megan Rapino keeps the ball in play. Going back emerging the six-yard box, being joined by Lauren Chaney. Still Rapino. Just trying to get some elevation into the penalty area. Crosses blocks. Here's Lloyd. Now to Engen. Says to Abby one back, go and get that one. And that was a teasing ball. I don't think Kim Chung Mi was too keen to come out for that one. And in the end, it's a goal kick. Looking Tom Samani. Ninety seconds remaining of the first forty five minutes here. The United States with a comfortable three nil cushion against South Korea. And this international friendly on the NBC Sports Network. And here's Ji So Young for the South Koreans. That's a better ball. It's a better timed run as well by Yu Young Da. And eventually the flank does go up. That was closer though. The South Koreans do have an excellent chance of qualifying for their second World Cup finals. The field for Canada 2015 extended to 24 teams, and North Korea are banned from the qualifiers. Some of their players tested positive for banned substances at the 2011 World Cup in Germany. So the Asia Women's Cup, which is the qualification tournament, is held in Vietnam next May. And out of eight teams, five will qualify. The powers are Australia, China, Japan in that region. And the rest really, Vietnam, Myanmar, Thailand and Jordan. Five of those eight will qualify. So South Korea feeling pretty confident about things. And as Kate mentioned, someone from the South Korean group said that the operation, the aim, is the quarterfinals. Plenty of success in the youth tournaments recently. 
And in that U20 World Cup that the USA won, they lost their opening group game South Korea to Nigeria. Then they beat Italy and Brazil to qualify for the quarterfinals. They lost 3-1 to the host Japan. The future looking bright. Alex Morgan into the penalty area. Morgan tees it up! 160 and counting. Four goals in 45 minutes. Abby Wambach is all smiles. And there's daylight in the record now. What play by Alex Morgan? Oh, it goes down. The give and go between Wambach and Moore play off each other so well. Morgan with an aggressive touch, sealing off a defender. Alex does not have a great shot on goal. She realizes she lacks the angle, looks up, finds Abby, and with the outside of her first left foot, Wambach times it perfectly. Wide open net and finishes it. Well, she has scored five, as I mentioned earlier in her game. This isn't the most or the most prolific game of her career, but who knows it could be. By the 90-minute mark. We've had the minutes of time added on. What a remarkable half of international soccer here in Harrison, New Jersey. We started thinking that Abby Wambach had an outside chance of scoring three goals to beat Mia Hamm's record. And in the end, in the first 45 minutes, minutes she's stuck in four. She's got 160. And everyone can move on, I suppose, after a little bit of a celebration. Wambach again. Rapino. Lloyd forward to Cheney. Defended by Engin. And that's half time. 45 minutes of soccer that will live long in the memory for Abby Wambach, for her family, and for US women's soccer fans. Four goals for Abby tonight against South Korea. Numbers 157, 158, 159, and 160. There's your new world record holder. Let's head down to Kate with Tom Samani. Hi, Tom. Tell us your thoughts on the first half. Uh, delighted. You know, obviously a fairy tale first half for Abby, but really delighted with the way we uh, approached the game. That was like what we expect from a US team. We moved the ball extremely well, pressured the opposition really well, and, and played with a great deal of uh, energy and confidence and, and really good soccer. Now thoughts on Abby Wambach breaking the record, now adding two to it. Uh, smashing the record, as it turns out. You know, one great player breaking the record of another great player. So, you know, that's how soccer moves on. And it, it's great to have stars like Mia having that record. Now a star like Abby taking, you know, taking that away from her and, you know, and then looking for who's next. Thank you, Tom. Back to you, Arlo. OK, thanks very much. Wonderful context provided there by Tom Samani. Not one of his toughest half-time speeches to come. That was the goal, that was the moment that she equaled Mirham's record. See, she, since shattered it. It's 4-0 at half-time. Welcome to the U.S. Soccer Halftime Report on the NBC Sports Network. It is all USA over South Korea at the half for nothing and it's all about Abby Wambach as much as she'd like to make it about the team tonight is about history and Abby got it going in the 11th minute with goal number one. Well this is, this is a Wambach show look at her off the ball movement she's waiting she's waiting she's waiting gets in front of her defender now she knows exactly where that player is there's one two three four five six players closest to Abby. She's able to turn, keep the ball tight to her, turn so no one can dispossess her, and slots it right past the keeper. So 11 minutes in, she's within one goal of Mia Hamm's record for international goal. 10 minutes in, in fact, and now here comes the record tying goal. Well, she pulls herself off away from the defender, goes and finds the ball. That's what Wambach always has done, is she goes and she seeks the ball. And then in the last goal, typical Abby Wambach to break the record, times it, her jump, hits it perfectly, the accurate height on her jump, and nails in the back, and that was such power. And then her parents, Judy Wamba, true to form, emotional, 
This is her loved ones in front of them. And that was number 159, but she wasn't done yet. Alex Morgan the run, and Wombach the finish, 160. You know, give credit to Alex Morgan here. She could have been selfish and taken that shot, but instead, she knows Abby. it's Abby's night, and she goes and she takes it, and she passes it to her with a great ball. Wombach finishes the run, and... It's been a wonderful night for Abby Wambach. Four goals in the first half for Abby Wambach. Her personal record is five. That's still in the offing. The overall record is hers alone now at 160. And your thoughts from someone who played at this level, played with Abby? Well, I think you know exactly what she's going to do. You know how strong she is. And you try to fight her, and it doesn't matter. She's stronger than you. And then you try to win a ball off her in the air. doesn't matter. She's going to out-jump you, out-finesse you. But she's accurate. People do not give her enough credit for how skillful she is. You don't break Mia Hamm's record by just being a big player. You get it because you're a skilled, talented, athletic, and determined individual. True to her word, we asked Abby what would happen if she broke the record tonight. Yesterday, she said, I'll probably just run to the person who had the assist. Abby Wambach with the record breaker runs right to Megan Rapino. We're coming right back with more from Red Bull Arena. Welcome back to Red Bull Arena here in Harrison, New Jersey. What a night it's been so far for the US women's national team. And in particular, the star of the show, Abby Wambach. Four goals so far. The United States lead by four goals to nil. And she's the new international goal scoring record holder with 160 ahead of Mia Hamm's 158. An exhilarating first 45 minutes. One substitution for the United States by Tom Samani at half time. Hope Solo was making her 137th appearance, her first start since February against Scotland. But Jill Lloyden comes in to earn her seventh cap. She plays NWSL soccer for Sky Blue FC. She most probably would have been the starting goal uh, goalkeeper in the Algarve Cup in March, with Hope Solo having been injured. But she then fractured her own hand, so she missed the tournament as well. But Lloyden in goal. The 10 outfield players for the United States exactly the same. No changes either for South Korea. One ball forward. They go straight into the attack. And there's promise here for Ji So Yun. On her outside is Park He Young. Here she is. Two to wait for in the box. The cross goes all the way through. Kim Na Rae will retrieve. Heather O'Reilly with the defending. Sean Unha. Ball breaks it Cho So Hyun. Good start to the second half here by South Korea. Lovely turn by Ji So Hyun. Just trying to thread it through to Yu Young Ah. But it was well read. And Rapino sends Alex Morgan galloping away again. He's so quick. They're struggling to keep up. Morgan on the left foot drives it into the side netting. Well, that's the skill of Megan Rapino. She sees that South Korea is up in an expanded attacking shape. That is the time when you set the counter attacking. You go in transition. Sends a long ball into Morgan's path. Morgan cuts it to her left foot, trying to beat the keeper on the near post. The angle's just a bit too tight for that shot. Okay, it's a tricky situation, isn't it, for South Korea here? 4 0 down at the break. All hopes of a victory here, you would have thought, have evaporated long ago. Beaten 4 1. On Saturday, I thought they turned in a better performance then. But damage limitation for them now, do you think, or will they still try and play? South Korea still has to try to play because that is the only thing they can do. They can't compete physically. They can't compete with power. Their biggest strength is their possession. And you have to remember, they view this as an experience. They view this as a learning the time to get better against the best in the world because they're not looking for the short term. They're not looking for the W today. They're looking for the W in the World Cup to get to the quarterfinals. That is their goal two years from now. So substitution, thank you, Kate, will be made here. Becky Sauerbrunn will come on and Christy Rampone fittingly hands the captain's armband to Abby Wombag. So Rampone is off from New Jersey. The Garden State has produced six players in this squad and Becky Sauerbrunn is on to earn her 44th cap. 27 year old from St. Louis.
Kim Hae Ri with the throw in for South Korea. First touch for Sauerbrunn. Cannons off Yu Young Ah. Ingen with the clearance. Cho So Hyun just trying to thread it through to Ji So Hyun who made the advance move and run in those bright luminous yellow boots. Klingenberg, Sauerbrunn, but a high pressure from the South Koreans. First touch for Lloyd. The new US captain Abby Wombat clattered into by Lim Son Chu. One hundred and sixty goals in two hundred and seven appearances, sixty nine of them headers. And she's actually on a bit of a tear anyway. Twenty two goals in the last twenty four and a half games for Abby Wombat. Alex Morgan was given almost four minutes at the start of the second half. And this is going to get interesting. Sydney LaRue comes onto the field. Scored recently against Canada in stoppage time in that 3-0 win in Toronto. Another prolific goal scorer in her embryonic international career. 17 goals in 37 appearances. One of the memories I think Kate I'll take away from the Olympic Games with NBC and my native land I suppose last year was Sydney LaRue's face here she is after scoring the second goal for the US in the quarter-final against New Zealand oh that face I think someone actually made her a t-shirt of that face she is a tweet post of her with that uh, that shirt on a fan at center but she's just fast dynamic and she's very courageous too good in the air and just someone as a defender, when she's running you with that much speed, it's a bit intimidating. And the United States is blessed. They have four front runners, and only two are playing right now. That means two could probably start on any other team in the world. Lingenberg, that's the shot here. To the back post it goes. Heather O'Reilly keeps it in play skillfully. O'Reilly tees it up towards one back. And that's good goalkeeping by Kim chung Mi. She realized when she was beaten there, Abby Wombat. But there's a South Korean defender down on the edge of the six yard area. Lim Son Chu. Fresh from 90 minutes on Saturday of Foxborough. And a concerned looking Yoon Diok Yo. Peers into the distance with his stricken defender. Well, that's something scary is when you see a player lying down for an extended period of time, rubbing their head with a collision with your goalkeeper as a defender. You are basically helpless. Your goalkeeper has almost the right away. You can think about it that way and you will get pummeled, but you have to use your body to try to prevent that forward from getting the ball. And sometimes you're the one who ends up taking the brunt of those impacts. Son Chu is back on her feet, and there's another substitution being made here by Tom Samani. Megan Klingenberg leaves the action, and Kelly O'Hara comes onto the field. She's been struggling recently with an ankle injury. Played every minute of the Olympic Games, all 570 of them last year. Another player from Sky Blue FC in the NWSL. Which she plays forward on, by the way. She plays left back for the United States and sometimes for Sky Blue. She's their, uh, their, she's their front runner with Lisa Devana. She's the so the Australian. Yeah, the Australian that had a bicycle kick in the women's game. It's a great YouTube video. But she's so good at going forward. What I like about her is she's comfortable dribbling, but she always cuts it to her right foot, which opens up the goal. But she's so dynamic going forward and she wins every single yo yo test, speed test. Just incredible endurance. What you need as a left back. Well, she's certainly versatile, Kate, because. She started out with the national team as a left-sided midfielder, didn't she, before being conver converted to a full-back? Yeah, she can basically play anywhere, definitely more on the width, because she can run for so long, a little bit smaller in stature, but she plays big. She's a very, very aggressive player, someone I used to get in lots of arguments with on the field when I used to play. She's so tenacious. Here's Heather O'Reilly running at the back line. The cross comes in, it's off the back. But she's so young, and it's a corner kick. Number eight of the game for the United States. We haven't found the back of the net yet in this second period. 
All four goals, if you're just joining us, by Abby Wambach, right in the centre of your screen in the first 45 minutes. The record breaker is Rapino. Towards the edge of the six yard box. It's a good header clear by Cho So Hyun, who then chases her own clearance. Sauerbrunn will get there first. Carly Lloyd, a little isolated on the left hand side for the United States. Quick throw in taken to Abby Wambach. A good challenge by Lim Son Chu. Who seems to have recovered from that clattering she received a few moments ago. And they're on the verge of double figures in the corner tally in the United States. Kim Chung Mi directing traffic in her own penalty area here. Radis, the short option here. Nicely work with Megan Rapino. Little drive comes in towards the near post. And it surprised Kim Chung Mi, but she kept the ball out. Most importantly, the dynamism, good ideas from the United States and from Megan Rapino. Well, Megan Rapino is such a creative force. She just sees things differently and has the courage to take them. She tries for the near post shot. It's got a low probability of actually going in, but she keeps it low and makes the goalkeeper make a save by keeping it on frame. Well, we asked her yesterday, Kate, didn't we? Will she go back to Lyon? The French Giants at the end of the current NWSL season. She's just signed, as I mentioned in the first half, with the Seattle Reign. And she said, they have asked me back. Now, the... NWSL season, the end of it will overlap with the start of the European season. She played six of the nine or ten months in Europe for Lyon, including that Champions League final. And I think she thoroughly enjoyed the experience. So don't rule out a return to Lyon in the future for Megan Rapino, who's closing down Kim Hay Ri. Well, I absolutely would not be surprised if she returns. She's getting to play with some of the most technical players in the world that like to keep possession, the type of soccer she likes to play. And it just makes her an even better player learning from them. Here's Sydney LaRue into the attack. Pulls it back. Cheney first time, and it's just over the head of Abby Wombat. Almost number five. Well, Sydney LaRue with a run to isolate her center back, is able to stay on her feet throughout the challenge, looks up and finds the slot runner, a delayed run by Lauren Chaney, trying to, she's holding back, trying to see how the play is going to develop, and then does a quick little burst into it. Unfortunately, just gets her hip a little bit too open, so goes wide of the goal frame. Change for South Korea. Lee Mina comes on to the field, 21 years old. She played 19 minutes on Saturday. Foxborough, another Hyundai Steel player in the Women's Korean League. <laughs> Lovely curl on that ball with the outside of the right foot from Carly Lloyd. Throw in USA, here's Heather O'Reilly. She'll leave it for Kelly O'Hara. Thumps clear by Kim Chung Mi. Heather from Engen towards Wombat. Hearing the time is running out for Abby Wambach if she wants to get a fifth tonight. She may leave the field momentarily. He substitutes it for Kristen Press, who's one of the rising stars of US women's soccer. And is this the moment? It appears so. A record-breaking night for Abby Wambach. Four goals in the first half. She's on 160. She's taken Mia Hamm's record tonight. A remarkable career and a remarkable achievement tonight. True champion, Abby Wombach leaves the field. I would imagine somewhat relieved at getting the job done. 
Away for the family. There you go. So Kristen Press is down the middle in attack for the US. And here comes South Korea. Trying to get a foothold into the game. Oh, he Young, the blonde haired figure. Can he read? Young has taken a vicious blow that time down on the sideline. Slow to her feet. So a night when the fans here can say they were here, Red Bull Arena, in June of 2013, on the night that Abby Wambach broke the record. This was early on. Lovely turn back to goal. And you've got a sense that it was on at that point. Then the record equaled 158 with a trademark header. And that was the record breaker of the meat of the forehead for Abby Wambach. And she added another one just for good luck to get to 160. Here it was from Alex Morgan's low cross. Mum and Dad very proud, very emotional. It's offside against Sydney LaRue down there. And there's Abby Wambach who can take a breather and I suppose get on with the next phase now, Kate. I mean, she really was saying to us yesterday, I really don't like this record. I, I, I want to get it done, get it out of the way as soon as possible. Well, now she can. She's got two years to look after herself, to stay fit and get ready for that World Cup in 2015. I wonder, Kate, I'll put you on the spot. Will she be a role player by then, do you think? Or do you think she'll still be in the starting 11? Impossible to answer, but what are your, what are your thoughts? Well, I think there's, a, there's anyone on this team that could will themselves to it, whether they physically decline a little bit, it would be Abby Wambach. But you have to remember what makes her special is her ability in the air. That doesn't decrease with age. And people do not give her credit for how good of a, on the ball she is. Now, I think Abby has done a wonderful job scoring all these goals because you can give her just garbage balls and she cleans them up and makes something of it. But look at the, a lot of the balls that she receives that she has to deal with and with her back to pressure. They're very difficult to then turn and create and set play. If they can improve their service to her, you will expand the time that she can be on the field. into the attack, they made another substitution. Kwon Ha Nu has come into the game for Park Hee Young. And the flag up on the near side. An apparent offside against South Korea. Lee Mina Ha had just strayed. All smiles on the US bench. And Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach scored 55 goals between them last year. And they've now got 14 between them in 2013, Sidney LaRue, very direct approach, as usual. She wants to get in on the action tonight. She's so young. Mimi Nara available in the centre circle, here she is. Becky Sauerbrunn is the defender. She's so young, sprays it skillfully to Kwon Ha Nu. Here comes the crossfield ball. Enger got a toe to it. It's Cho So Hyun. And again. Yun Yung Ah into the penalty area. Dunn is the defender. Right, he goes to Chon Una. With skill from here into the near post. Ingen with the defending. Poise from Carly Lloyd, and here come the United States again. Kristen Press making a darting run down the centre of the field. I think Megan Rapino felt she could get rid of the ball in time to keep her on side. But here's Rapino again. The South Korean coach is getting much, much more verbal, yelling, and he's telling his players, and his hands are clasping when they didn't hit an early service. He's looking for them to play a little bit quicker. Every time they take an extra touch, he slaps his hands, and yes, I'm reading into it by his thing, but. That's kind of the universal language when you're disappointed in something. Cho So Hyun again, 24 years old. She scored South Korea's goal on Saturday, the third of her international career. One of the main players, the number eight for South Korea, going forward. They attempt to reach their second World Cup. The 25 years old on Monday.
Press. Rapino, Cheney. Press has six goals in eight appearances so far this season, the young striker. He's been playing for TSO in Sweden as well. The pace from Dunn. Very good defending in the end by Lim Son Chu. Press. O'Hara. Now Rapino. That favourite right foot. It's opening up for Megan Rapino. O'Hara's filled the space vacated by the midfielder. Here comes the cross into the penalty area. And it's number five. And Lauren Cheney has two in two. The patience of the United States to find their moment, and that started with Megan Rapino. She could have shot the ball when she was dragging it. Spins out right here and finds out why. That's such a great awareness. Kelly O'Hara serving it in. Lauren Cheney, a good job of getting in front of her player, timing it perfectly. But what you don't see is the United States holding their run and then recycling their runs, waiting for the perfect moment. That's an awareness that the United States is starting to show more and more often. Everyone critiques this team for not being technical, not having an awareness. It's not that. It's just that no one demanded it of them consistently. And if they do that, they'll get playing time. And that's what Coach Tom Sermani has brought. And that's going to be a challenge for him going forward, isn't it? To impart that on his team as the United States look to back up the energy they always play with, the heart, the desire, the insatiable appetite for success, for goals and for wins and for titles. But as the game gets more technical around the world, the United States are going to have to respond. They are so much more strong, athletic, than virtually every team in the world. But it's about, I think, Kate, future-proofing this team as Megan Rapino sends a curling shot over the bar. Things might be different in five or ten years at this level of soccer with the game improving. The United States can't afford to stand still and just rely on this. I know that Tom said to us yesterday he doesn't want to lose the asset that the American team has always had, this, in, this desire that they've had. But sophistication, I think, now is the order of the day, and that's a slow process, isn't it? But it starts now. It is a process, but it's something that he has enough time to build. And he's also being benefited from having a youth system that is trying to identify technical players that have high soccer intelligence and getting them playing time and giving them opportunities. Morgan Bryan, for example, is someone that has come into this camp and has impressed him as an attacking center mid. What an incredible feel for the game. But it's going to take time, but they need it because it's going to be more and more difficult to beat teams that are because they're better organized. They have better shapes, and they're finally getting money from their federations and investing in their teams. Just to re-emphasize, the United States team has those players in the side. They are available. They are such fun to watch. They really are. We're talking, I think, Kate, aren't we, when you get to World Cup quarterfinals and almost perhaps, look at that searching ball. She's in here, Press, on the left foot. Takes her time about it. Press over the bar. What a wonderful ball. It must have been all of 50 yards for Megan Rapino. Well, Megan Rapino gives the best service out of any player on the United States, realizes that Kristen Press is isolated in a 1v1 and has the technical ability to deliver that service. Press just takes too many touches on the ball, trying to get it to her right foot and hits the ball a bit off balance, leaning back a tad, getting underneath it, and the opportunity is passed. Plaudits to the defender, Shin Soo Young, who got back there, the number four. She scored twice against the Netherlands, Kristen Press, in April, in a 3-1 win in The Hague. And here's an opportunity, perhaps. The shot comes in, Jill Lloyd was backtracking. In the end, it was over the crossbar. is the all-time leading goal scorer at Stanford University. She found the net 71 times. She's 
punctuated highly enough by Tom Samana to have started the Algarve Cup final against Germany in March over in Portugal. A 2 0 victory for the United States for their ninth Algarve Cup. G Sun Young. Sarab under the sliding challenge. Rapino gets there ahead of Kim Hay Ree. Still Rapino. Here's LaRue. someone like a Kristen Kress, they're just trying to figure out where is she most effective. They've tried her out on the wing. That's not something she's used to playing. She's an all-and-out striker on her club teams. But the more she can increase her versatility, the likelihood she'll get increased minutes for the United States Women's National Team. But this is where she wants to be. She wants to be up top, dribbling at players. That's her strength. Quick, fast, and a great technical touch. I don't think the Korean bench to your right-hand side there, Kate, are particularly impressed with that sliding challenge by Becky Sauerbrunn. No, the entire coaching staff has now stood up and checking on their player to see if she's okay. Kwon ha went hobbling away from that challenge. No foul given. Red Bull Arena turning into a very happy hunting ground for the... U.S. women's side, one previous game played here in 2011 against Mexico, that was a warm-up for the World Cup. They outshot the Mexicans 34-4 on the night, but only won by a goal to nil. Tonight it's 5-0. They won back with four of those goals. And if you're just joining us, those goals took a pass. Mia Hamm onto 160 for her career, and she holds the world record, and she is. Mia Hamm's mark of 158. Lauren Chaney with a goal to her name tonight. Warmly greeted by Tom Samani. Yael Averbush comes onto the side, uh, onto the field, excuse me, from Upper Montclair in New Jersey. Another one back recently from European soccer. She plays for Gutterberg in Sweden. His press. Reverses it to Carly Lloyd. Lloyd with more of an attacking role now in the centre of the field. The edge can't get to that one. What I love there is Christy Rampone is not on the field, so you're going to need a verbal communicator. And you look up and you see number 14, Engen, with less than 10 caps, directing Sauerbaum and also telling Kelly O'Hara, hey, look, there's someone wide left of you, which prompted Kelly O'Hara to turn around and chase. That young leadership comes from games. That came from the WPS, and now she's playing over in England. But that's what the benefit of the league does. It gives these players chances to build their leadership skills, to become the prominent team members, and that transfers to the international game. Okay, when these players are making decisions whether to play domestically in the NWSL or go abroad like press, like Engen, what comes into the decision-making process? Is it financial or is it just a desire to taste life overseas? Well, I doubt it's financial with some of the players going over to Sweden. That's not normally a club that, uh, a country that plays so well, being that I played there with Christine Lilly. Cross comes in towards LaRue. But it's an individual thing. Can they grow? In the case of Megan Klingenberg and Kristen Press, they're playing for Tony Gustafsson, who also on a team with Marta, Boquette, all these incredible players. Rubino. She's going to get better from that. And the same thing with Megan Klingenberg. Sorry, Ken, here's Sydney LaRue trying to make something happen in the penalty area. It's like a deflection. But a goal kick is given. There's Kristen Press. Future star for the US women's national team, potentially 24 years old. The 33 match unbeaten run. About to be stretched to 34, their last defeat, March the 5th, 2012, that was 1-0 to Japan in the Algarve Cup. It's the third longest unbeaten streak in national team history. A ways to go to beat the record, though, 51 matches between 2004 and 2007. They've lost only one of the last 80 friendlies. That was to England in April of 2011. And it's a 71-match unbeaten run at home for the USA. Denmark, the last side to win 
on US soil in Philadelphia. Three goals to one in November of 2004. Abby Wombach scored in that game, one of only two defeats once he actually managed to score a goal. There have been 101 victories, or there will be at the final whistle here tonight. All those victories are impressive, Arlo, but a lot of those victories, they didn't dominate the performance, they didn't dominate possession, they didn't put a stamp on the game. That's something Tom Sarmani is trying to change. The route to Carly Lloyd. That'll be a corner kick. And they're into double figures. The corner kicks tonight, the US. Number 10. Look for Whitney Engen to try to get the ball. Number 14. Or Yael for the long distance. Ava Bush with the volley. She gets another opportunity, and it's a good save in the end. Yael Ava Bush, the substitute. Kim Chung Mi, the goalkeeper. Again, wonderful invention from Megan Rapino from the corner kick. Well, she has the players to do it. Yael Ava Bush is so good on those one time strikes. And also, if there's any set piece, watch for her technique and power is world-class anywhere from 35 yards out you saw the shots there on your screen a few moments ago 18 to 2 five converted into goals for the united states tonight as we approach the final 15 minutes of a hugely enjoyable night at red bull arena here in harrison new jersey an historic evening for Abby Wambach. Foul against Press. And as we mentioned in the first half, Kate, Christine Sinclair is still playing and still going strong for Canada on 145 goals. So that could go on for a while, couldn't it, between those two? It definitely could because Sinclair is such a quality forward that doesn't really need to outrun players. She just sits and she picks her moments. She's a smart player. They're going to have lots of games to lead up. They're before the World Cup to increase the development of the Canadian team. It's not going to stop till they both retire. I was at Old Trafford, very, I count myself very fortunate to be at that semi-final, that epic encounter, the 4-3 victory for the US over Canada, where Christine Sinclair scored a quite superb hat-trick and ended up on the losing side. Fortunately for the Canadians, they did scoop the bronze medal in the end, victory over France in the third and fourth place playoff. As many people, observers, I think we're glad about after their performance in the semi-final against the United States. Another substitution being made here by South Korea. Kim Sang-un comes in to the game. Chon Un Ah makes way. Is Becky Sauerbrunn then for the United States? Kelly O'Hara, Megan Rapino, head straight up. That's a threaded through towards Carly Lloyd, who's enjoying the freedom, I think, now of that attacking central midfield role with the Isle Ava Bush behind her. From Saw Young, Lee Mina, Kim Nare. They've been chased harried and harassed all evening the south koreans unable to get any foothold into the game whatsoever cho so young that perhaps was their best period of possession but they've given it away rapino on the right foot megan rapino fancies the drive here but slots it to the right hand side in the penalty area here's an opportunity and it's wide Well, if I'm South Korea, I would try to keep the ball and the play away from Megan Rapinoe's side because if she's not on the ball and she wins it, she will dismantle you. She dribbles it at the defender, makes her commit, slots it. Kristen Press decides to take a touch, cut it back across her defender, open up the goal, and doesn't get enough spin and texture on the ball to spin it into the upper corner. But right now, if I'm South Korea, they're trying to gain experience and confidence. First of all, keep the ball away from this side. The United States has not attacked that much on the Crystal Dunn, Heather O'Reilly side. Megan Rapinoe has been so dangerous. Keep the ball away from this. She's setting all the play for the United States. I'm a little surprised that she's still on the field, actually. Kate, Megan Rapinoe, she's been given a good run here by Tom Samani, isn't she? This is on the ball again. Doesn't look tired at all, though. Towards the edge of the area, and Sydney LaRue, who 
Slides gets a challenge in, and it is a corner kick when perhaps that was a foul by Sydney LaRue on Kim Hayri. Well, oh. Arlo, she was gone. You have to remember. She was gone this whole entire time. She hasn't played for the United States since February. It's time to see her. And look how much she has grown as a player on both sides of the ball. It's a different player to me. Absolutely. She only played 45 minutes against Wolfsburg in that Champions League final. Not happy of coming off. Why would she be? They lost 1-0. Here comes the corner kick. Punch clear. I mean, as far as Carly Lloyd. She'll keep the ball in play. Dunn in support. Lloyd's going to have a little run. Step over. Put towards the byline. Well marshalled, though, by the South Korean defence. Kwon Hanu. And Zaver Bush. Showing on the edge of the penalty areas. Kristen Press. She's on her right foot. Switches it to her left. Surrounded by red shirts, so she threads it to Rapino. Rapino with a slip at the crucial time, unfortunately for her. It's an excellent run by Press, wasn't it, Kate, to the edge of the penalty area to offer support in that attack. The awareness is O'Hara. Deep cross, testing one for Kim chung Mi. And the referee's whistle has gone. It was a challenge by Sydney LaRue. And that's left Kim chung Mi down in her own six-yard area. If there is anyone on this team that has the will to go into a goalkeeper like that, besides Abby Wambach, it would be Sydney LaRue. She is so good in the air. She times things well. More than that, she puts her body on the line. And here she runs into the Korean goalkeeper, Kim Jung-mi. Approaching the final 10 minutes here. And the athletic trainer is on for the South Korean goalkeeper. Sydney LaRue. 14 international goals in 2012, including that one I mentioned against New Zealand at St James's Park in Newcastle, in the northeast of England in the Olympic quarter final. Five goals and an assist in seven games for the Boston Breakers in NWSL play this year. Delighted to get her first gold medal, Olympic gold medal that is, last year from Los Angeles. Yoon Diok Yo. Peering into the distance at his goalkeeper. He actually played two matches at the 1990 World Cup in Italy for South Korea. One was a 3-1 defeat to Spain, the other he was sent off in a 1-0 defeat to Uruguay in Udine. 31 caps to his national side. Kim Chung-mi flexing that left leg. You mentioned it before, but the South Koreans at a youth level are becoming a powerful, dominant for force because it all started back in 2002 when the Men's World Cup, they shared it with Japan. That peaked interest, and now money has started to invest in the women's game. That's why these players are younger, but are coming forward. But you get to see the ball in from O'Hara, testing the goalkeeper, Sydney LaRue. They both go up for it. They call it a foul on the Ruby. She came in more with her body. But that, to me, is a fair challenge. I think a knee went into the left thigh there. Just by that picture. Just a love tap, Arlo, just a love tap. And there's no limp now, is there, fortunately, for Kim Chung-mi. The one-back penalty the other day, by the way, at Foxborough was her 100th goal conceded in international soccer. This is her 64th cap. She's about to get us back underway. LaRue. Forward from O'Reilly. Jiso Yun on the breakaway for South Korea. Pistol done, backtracking, her recovery speed excellent. The flag is up on the near side. A matter of inches there for Yu Young Ah. Yu Young Ah is doing a better job of timing her run. She's still off sides, but that back line, the United States, is not. Synchronized, they're a little bit staggered, which isn't surprising because they lack continuity. These three have not played together. Well, at the start of the game, Kate, the back four had 298 caps between them, and Christy Rampone had 282 of them. It's remarkable, isn't it? The credit to Tom Sermani, he's giving everyone a chance. And yes, it's uncomfortable if you're a consistent starter in the past for the United States. We have to remember, P.S. and Hoggy didn't change her starting 11 for four years. Super Bowl with sprints Sydney LaRue. And she arrows towards goal on the right foot, pulls it back towards press. 
Carly Lloyd was there in support as well. Good defending, alert defending by Lim Son Chu. South Korea is going to be better for this experience. Their defenders, because they have just been pummeled for this entire game, will be better players and will be less intimidated the next time they face an opponent like the United States. But I love how they're not giving up, how they're still trying to play their game, and they're still going into tackles. And this is a young squad that's showing resilience, and this will pay dividends in the long run. Ava Bush slides in and wins the challenge. And leaves Cho So Hyun on the field. His press. Rapino. What trouble she got of her sleep here? An excellent drive. And in the end, that was super goalkeeping by Kim Chung Mi. You'd have been right behind that the, from the position between the benches, Kate. Was that fizzing, moving, knuckling around? Typical Megan Rapino shot. She has an ability to put a bend on the ball, and it was knuckling. The goalkeeper, Kim jong did a good job of pushing it and blocking away. That was not a catchable ball. But this is something scary for South Korea. This is their best player. She plays only one on this team that plays outside the country, and they do not want to see her down. And she's just an incredible story. She was playing with the boys until second grade. Her mom is on welfare. Single mom has cancer, and she played through it. And now her mom is better. She brings money back to the family, and this is their best player. Yeah, it's Ji So Yun who's down on the ground. Leading scorer in the squad with 24 goals. Only 22 years of age. She plays for Kobe in Japan. And let's take a look at this then and also a listen to this. always good to see a player walk off that field but that scream that's unsettling to anybody especially the South Korean bench with the entire coaching staff standing up now trying to reorganize their team now that she's taken a step off until they can put a sub in if they decide to sub her well there is going to be a substitution Shin Chi Young number 19 21 years old from Seoul City he's on the field and Ji So Young will stay off the field, hobbling towards the bench. Ji So Young can't believe it. She thought she was going back in a moment of confusion and now heading down to the trainer. There's another South Korean player down now. This is Kim Hae Ri. This is not uncommon to see against the United States. No one is physically as fit as the United States is for 90 minutes. Some of it's depth, some of it's the style that they play, but it's also because they have so much supporting them. Don Scott, their fitness trainer, so good at keeping them fit and strong, and that has been a difference maker over the past couple of years. And Kate is relentless, isn't it? Because when the starting 11 starts to leave the field, the likes of Sydney LaRue, here she is, comes on. Just impress as well, just to maintain the pace at which the game is being played. We saw some of the South Koreans on Saturday. Fox was struggling with cramp in the late stages of the game. Here's LaRue. Ava Bush. LaRue, space for a shot. Right foot in, good save. Kim Chung Mi down to her right hand side. Still there for Heather O'Reilly. Ava Bush in the area. She'll try and curl one. It's deflected into the air. Ava Bush wins the header. Still bouncing around. Not cleared by South Korea. LaRue wins it back. Done on the right hand side. Plenty of white shirts to aim for. Here he comes towards press, and the header's over the bar. The circulation of the ball by the United States is impressive. Yal Averbush tries to take a shot, blocks, but all of a sudden is on the left-hand side, and on now it's over on the right. This is something Tom Sermani wants. Circulate the ball and wait for that killer pass and that moment. The technique will come. Accuracy will improve the more they get used to all these different types of opportunities.
Sauber with the challenge. Here's Carly Lloyd. Cheeky back heel to press. Back out again to Lloyd. Opportunity here. Here comes the drive, and it's across the face of goal. Missing the target and also missing Sidney LaRue. Well, Carly Lloyd starts us with a nifty back heel. Unpredictable. And Kristen Press scoops it up a little bit over the defender's foot. And Carly Lloyd has a look at it. <laughs> so close. So close. Well, I put four away. I did my job tonight. <laughs> Maybe will be one back breaking the record. It was a remarkable first 45 minutes. She'll join us on the set, I'm delighted to say, after the game. I'll be one back. She was with us before the game. There's confirmation. That's the current top five for the United States. Mia Hamm, 158 from 275 games. And I'll be one back has got there in her 207th appearance. It's done. Heather O'Reilly straight towards goal. Lovely skill. Heather O'Reilly drives it in. Another good save. And another shot. And another save. This time from Ava Bush. Kim Chung Mi, fair play to her. In the last minute, she's made four terrific saves in the last five minutes. The ball goes wide to Heather O'Reilly. She's coming in. She's really known for just pushing it past the old run. She changes it up here. Kim Chung Mi blocks it. Unfortunately, back into pressure does an excellent job of holding on to a difficult, powerful strike from Yala Everbush. And she's been down injured as well in the second half. She's been in the wars. Had plenty of crosses and shots to deal with. But she's steadfast to the last here, Kim chung Mi. We'll have three minutes of time added on at the end of an historic night at Red Bull Arena. The night that Abby won back broke Mia Hamm's long-standing goal-scoring record. Goals in the 10th minute, the 19th minute, the hat-trick, and the 159th record-breaking goal in the 29th minute. And then one more for luck in the 45th, just before half-time. After great work from Alex Morgan. Four goals in the first half. It was 4-0 at the half. The goal has since been added by Lauren Chaney in the 64. 5 0 your score. Here's Dunn. They are relentless, and they will attempt to score goals until that whistle blows the United States against a clearly exhausted South Korea. Eva Bush flips it in towards Rapino, who couldn't get a toe on the ball. I think Shim saw Yun feel she heard a call from Kim Chung Mi. Let the ball go. Rapino just short of getting involved. Sauber under this one. Oh, Ava Bush, we've seen plenty of the ball. And looked pretty poised when she's had it as well. Wide it goes again to O'Reilly, and once again she starts the motor. Towards the edge of the penalty area, still Heather O'Reilly. Ava Bush again gets underneath this one. There were some white shirts queuing at the far post as well. And there's Abby Wambach en route to talk to Russ Thaler and to Kate Margraff in our post-game show getting a wonderful reception. OK, we talked about it over the last 24 hours. We sensed something special could happen tonight, but it's a lot to ask to score a hat-trick. You've been around the women's game in this country for a long time. What were you thinking in the first half when the goals were flying in? I think you can tell a lot how the United States is going to play by Abby Wambach's face, which has got that steely look to her. Abby Wambach was on fire tonight. It finished all our chances, but what was more impressive is how the United States came out. This is the first time this year that I've seen them come out collectively, every single one of them, with a little bit more motivation to them. Maybe they wanted to get Abby the record, what have you, but that was a big reason why Abby got the service that she did. Their expanded shape attacking opened up some gaps that she is so good at finding and capitalizing on. And it must be said, Kate, you deserve a handshake from Abby afterwards. You provided two of the assists for the goals. Remember when I said some of the service was garbage and she just cleaned it up and made it look good? <laughs> oh, don't do yourself down. <laughs> One of them was in the Olympic Games, wasn't it? Uh, 
It was garbage, Arlo, pure garbage. <laughs> but she made me look good. Well, you did say the, the target area is slightly larger when Abby Wombach is lurking at the back post. Absolutely, she'll because she'll, she will put her body on the line in a way no one else will get. She does not care about her career, she just cares about that moment. Well, it was her night. That's the full-time whistle. Remarkable entertainment in the first 45 minutes, particularly here in New Jersey. An historic night for US women's soccer. Abby Wambach with goals number 157, 158, 159, and 160. She's the new record holder, and we will speak to her after this break. Final score, United States 5, South Korea 0. Show it off, America. You did it right. And you went to the one place that helps you do it right, AutoZone. We have the advice, the instructions, we even loan tools because parts are just part of what we do. Get in the zone. AutoZone. Just got better. You bet it did. It's Endless Wings and now all you can eat baby back ribs. Hello. It's all part of our endless dinner buffet for one low price. Non-stop wings and now endless baby back ribs. Only at Golden Corral. What's something that's slow that you wish was fast? Turtle. Really? A turtle? Yeah. And what about you? I'd rather be a slow turtle. Well, mmm. I know why. Because when you're slower, you won't have to get in the street as fast and get ran over. But if you're a slow turtle and you're in the middle of the street, what happens? Austin? Exactly. It's not complicated. Faster is better. And AT&T is the nation's fastest 4G LTE network. Some lucky dogs have that perfect amount of gray hair that everyone loves. Now it's easy to be one of them with Touch of Gray. The formula takes away a little gray without getting rid of it all. Touch of Gray. Now's a perfect time. This is how I go from Shaquille to Shakul. Get it? New Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray. Now get all the cooling, drying power of Gold Bond Powder in a refreshing No Mess Spray. New Gold Bond Powder Spray. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Legendary. Unsurpassed. Best in class. Not the kind of words you throw around lightly, but when you're the fastest growing truck brand in America, it's our basic vocabulary. The 2013 Ram 3500. Guts. Glory. Ram. Right now, get 1.9% financing and $1,000 bonus cash on 2013 Ram Heavy Duty Trucks. When you've got a hungry crew to feed, no matter the size, Homefield Grill is a good call. When your family deserves local, fresh, and scratch made, Homefield Grill is a good call. When a couple of drinks with friends demands a massive selection of brews and killer apps to share, Homefield Grill is a good call. Our new burgers are the talk of the town. There's the stuffed one, the donut one, and the 12-ouncer that's a mix of beef and ground bacon. Excuse me, is that legal? Not sure. Try them all. Homefield Grill in Round Rock is always a good call. Welcome back. And let the record show in the 29th minute, Abby Wambach scored her third goal of the game against South Korea. Her 159th international tally, making her the most prolific international goal scorer in women's soccer history. As USA defeats South Korea 5-0 here at Red Bull Arena. And Abby Wambach joins us on set. Russ Thaler, Kate Margraff, and Abby Wambach. Abby, congratulations. I know it's a night you're never going to forget, but what was it like to actually experience breaking the record and scoring four goals here in front of all these fans? Um, you know, it's surreal to begin with. Like, the whole first half was crazy. I mean, from the first minute, I even had a, I missed a breakaway, so it could have even been, been worse, I guess. But... You know, I'm so thankful, and I've said it all along. Um, my teammates were trying to get me those goals, and it was clear. 
So at halftime, I was like, all right, it's over with. Let's get back to playing. You know, be selfish. Take shots yourself. Um, can't thank them enough. Cheney, Megan, you know, Alex, fourth, the, the fourth goal assist. Amazing. I got to ask you a question. I know you have so many goals, but how much of a, is this a relief for you that this has been six months, everyone's talking about it, Nike, U.S. soccer. Is it nice to have the distraction finally done with? Yeah, of course. I mean, as, an, as a competitor, you want to you wanna be done with, with things that, especially for me, uh, that put me at the forefront of conversations. Uh, this team is too good to be talking about just one person, so I'm glad it's over with. Abby, your family was here tonight. What does it mean to you to have mom and dad and the rest of your family in here watching this history unfold? I mean, it, there's nothing better. I usually play much better when my parents are in the stands. Uh, my friends and family, you know, actually Dan Borzo is the one that flew them all in here. So I'm very thankful that they're here. They're oh, mom, are you hearing? In. Yeah. Hey, mom, I'm right here. Wave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed they didn't give her a mic. I'd love to hear what she right? had to say. <laughs> So, Abby, now that you can move past this, what's the next goal for you? You know, you set goals, I'm sure, individually and as a team. What's your next personal goal? Well, it's never been my goal to, to break any world record, uh, especially one that my, let, my you know, my idol, Mia Hamm, had set. Uh, you know, a personal goal would be to assist on many more Alex Morgan goals so that she one day could break my record. Uh, and, of course, 2015 World Cup title. I would love nothing more than to bring that home for us. Now, as a player, we always talk about what you want to work on. I always say, you can set play. It's just the quality of service of balls that come to you that don't come to your neck. Where in the field would you like to improve upon? Yeah, absolutely. In between the 18, you're right. Um, I do need to work on my first touch so that we can keep possession in our attacking third. You know, when balls are forced on my head, sometimes we don't keep as much possession as we'd like to because it's just a flick, flick on and, and a chance running behind. So. You know, balls into feet, receiving the ball and playing it back into our midfield. If our midfield is involved and, and they're they're controlling the play and the tempo of the game, you know, we usually have have a great game. Abby, how would you assess your team's performance tonight? I mean, they were all about trying to get me goals today, so I want to thank them. Uh, but I think that they played great. We we made a lot of things happen, attacked in many different ways. Uh, and I think that's the kind of so soccer Tom wants us to play. He wants us to keep learning how to play the game rather than focusing so much of our attention on just tackles and playing hard. He wants us to play good soccer and beautiful soccer. Well, a lot of the attention is on Abby Wambach tonight, and for good reason. Abby, congratulations. Four goal now, the all-time most prolific goal scorer in international history. All four coming in the first half as USA defeats South Korea 5-0 at Red Bull Arena, and we'll be back to wrap things up from Harrison, New Jersey, right after this on the NBC Sports Network. celebrating 10 years of making our own tracks. Introducing the limited edition Scion 10 series. <laughs> Introducing the world's smallest and lightest digital SLR camera. The Canon EOS Rebel SL1. Fast action in a little body. The Canon EOS Rebel SL1. Making small great. How do you know it's a Quizno sub? Quality ingredients like cilantro jalapeno slaw and applewood smoked pulled pork. That's how you know. Try the new barbecued pulled pork subs. Get a small for just $2.99 for a limited time. Only at Quiznos. Where can a marketing administrator be a watercraft engineer? Where can a doctor serve his community while also treating patients around the world? Where can a student stay in school while expanding his education beyond the classroom? In the U.S. Army Reserve, you'll find the strength to develop new skills and gain an edge to get ahead. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Visit GoArmy.com reserve. What drives us to redefine the way we watch TV 
is what drives us to broadcast the world's biggest events in 3D. Or live to your seat high above the Atlantic Ocean. It's what drives us to create eco-friendly racetracks, batteries that power tomorrow's cars, nearly indestructible laptops, and the sustainable smart towns of the future. At Panasonic, we're driven to make what matters most better. Just another way we're engineering a better world for you. Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, Major League Soccer continues on the NBC Sports Network from Portland when the Timbers welcome in the Colorado Rapids. It's Timbers Rapids Sunday at 7 Eastern right here on the NBC Sports Network. Abby Wambach with a hug for mom after four goals and a 5-0 win for USA over South Korea. For Arlo White and Kate Markrab, I'm Russ Thaler. Abby Wambach not only had four goals, she is now the all-time scoring leader. Lauren Chaney added the cherry. USA wins it 5-0 over South Korea. Thanks so much for watching. NBC Sports Network thanks you for watching this presentation of U.S. Soccer. Sharks in every ocean. But we still.